Um, next talk is a talk from Open Bazaar. I think everybody that loves digital flea markets will like it. Um, so I'll give the mic to uh, Dionysus and Sam from Open Bazaar. Well, thank you very much. All right, so let's get started. Wow, applause right off the bat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was easy. Let's, let's pack up. Sounds like we're done here. Okay, so Open Bazaar, what is it? Decentralized marketplace for conducting private trade with no fees online. The easiest way to think about it is a, it's like eBay and BitTorrent got together and they had a baby, and that baby is Open Bazaar. So, to be clear, this is not a website, right? This is a fully decentralized peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So that means that users will download the code from GitHub or wherever you want, run it locally on their machines. That connects them to a peer-to-peer -peer network, and they buy and sell services directly with no one in the middle. Now, this uses Bitcoin. How many people in here, raise your hand, have heard of Bitcoin? Okay, just about everyone. That's awesome. Now, how many people have actually used Bitcoin? Oh, well, that's, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Now, here's a tricky question. How many people here have used multi-signature aspects of Bitcoin? Okay, like five, six people. That's not bad, actually. Um, there's a really neat aspect of Bitcoin called multi-sig, which means that instead of having one party that controls the Bitcoin, you actually have multiple parties, and they have to agree before the Bitcoin go anywhere. Now, when you combine the multi-signature function that we use in Open Bazaar, along with the contracting system that I'll show you in a second, this actually means that you don't need to trust the other party in the trade. It's very difficult to scam anyone in using the Open Bazaar system. So, the contracts that we use are actually called Ricardian contracts. This is an example of the structure. It uses JSON. Uh, this is a partial contract, but you have things like uh, the price of the item, the category that it is, the of course, the title and all those kind of boring details. Um, these can be as long as you like, and they can be for any contract structure that you like as well. This is for a fixed price contract for people to uh, exchange goods with each other using uh, using Bitcoin on Open Bazaar. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Dionysus. Hey, um, so I, I'm going to explain to you how contracts work in uh, the Open Bazaar context. So the idea is that uh, when you have a party who wants to buy something and a party who wants to sell something, uh, you uh, introduce somebody called a notary. I'll explain what that is. So initially, the seller first creates the contract, which means they put their product on for sale. Anybody can do that. So you can, you can put some bots for sale, for example, just on the client. And then the buyer discovers this through our discovering mechanisms like search. And then um, the buyer is ready to buy. So he clicks buy, signs the contract using PGP. Uh, this is not visible to the user too much, so there's no, no technical things involved. They just click a button, and then the seller sees this, and they have to agree that this is the right price, this is the person I want to sell to. And then uh, they introduce the notary, so the notary uh, is a person that they both trust, and he sits in the middle and will, will help mediate the transaction in case something goes wrong. Uh, so uh, what happens is the notary checks the signed contract that you two are ready to sign, and then um, he confirms that he wants to mediate that if, if uh, it's ne necessary. And then he sends the final contract back to the seller and the buyer. So now uh, they're ready to actually perform the transaction. So what happens is first the person who wants to buy s uh, trans transfers over the Bitcoin to the multi-sig um, address. A and then once the funds are in the address, this constitutes a, a proof of payment. So the funds are locked there and the seller can see that the payment has been made but he, the seller cannot, cannot get the funds yet. So at that point, the seller is ready to ship the product to the buyer. Um, so once this is done, um, the successful the, uh, upon successful delivery, uh, then the buyer can finalize the transaction and say, okay, I'm freeing up these funds and they can go to my seller since I received my product. Um, so that's, that's a normal procedure and the notary doesn't really have to make that, have to do anything in the usual case. Um, so in, in some cases, you might get screwed because this is a, a decentralized market. Nobody has control of it. Nobody can censor it. Um, so unlike eBay, we, we can't really control this network. So we need this decentralized property of notaries. So a notary um, 
th their purpose is to mediate the transaction in case something goes wrong. In case they th th the buyer didn't receive the product or the, the seller uh, for some reason uh, didn't send it, whatever, the, uh, the notary is notified and then they file it so the two parties file a dispute, either of them, and then in that case the notary will talk to each party and decide what happens, like a judge. Uh, in that case, the notary can decide either to give the money back to the buyer or send it off to the seller, depending on uh, how the system works. By the way, the introduction of a notary is not really a requirement. If the parties want to transact between each other, they can choose not to have a notary, in which case the money gets lost in, in, in case of a dispute, right? Um, so the notary uh, can also charge for, for dispute resolution. Um, anybody can be a notary. You can be a notary, so you can make some money off of that and run it as a business. Um, it's it's not just us, right? Anybody can can do that. Uh, and then we have a reputation and identity system. Uh, this allows people to find vendors and uh, buyers that are trustworthy. Um, we use several mechanisms for trust. Um, two two pillars are uh, described here. One is the identity, and one is the web of trust. The identity is well, y we want we want our users to be able to be pseudonymous. So we provide some uh, assurances of anonymity. But we, we still want them to be trustworthy. So we want people to be able to trust people that they don't know. So one, th one thing that we use is we associate people with uh, nicknames, and the nicknames are secure. So um, we use Namecoin for that. And once you go to a store and they have a particular nickname or a, a store URL, uh, you will know that um, when you go back to the same URL, it's exactly the same person. So once you have a few transactions with them and you know they're good, you can access them by name and follow up with more transactions. Uh, we also use something called proof of burn. Uh, so we make it hard for people to create stores by, uh, by introducing a voluntary price that people have to pay to create a store so, uh, so that people are not able to create arbitrarily large number of stores and still be, still be trusted. Uh, finally, I think the most important part of our trust is our web of trust, which is still under development. And, and it's similar to PGP. Um, but it's also pseudonymous, and it's for it's created for financial reasons. And uh, wh what we do there is everybody can place trust on the people that they know, and then tra trust is transitive, and then um, you can use it for financial reasons. And because the usual web of trust is not transitive, we've made some changes to that. Um, so this is something that we're introducing. So we're going to show you a demo, but we really don't have the time. Um, to be honest, it's not that different than existing e-commerce things that you may be familiar with. If you want to see a demo, uh, we've we uh, you can see the guys on the team here, and we're going to have some more team members in a minute uh, come up on stage. Just come ask us. We're happy to show you a demo. So looking ahead, we're about to release the beta 4.0. Since last August, we've been putting out beta releases. Uh, the 4.0 is going to switch to um, RUDP for the networking which is uh, making the network much stable, much more easy to connect stores. So it's a, it's a big release. Um, if you want to test it now, um, actually in the next few days, it's not in the, mer it's in the develop branch yet, but it will be soon, uh, please go to the develop branch on our GitHub and check it out. We'd love to have some more eyes on it. Beta 5.0, hopefully mid to late March, is going to have major uh, user interface improvements. And then our, our hope is in late spring, we're gonna have the first full release which basically just means the average e-commerce user today, someone who's using eBay or Etsy or any of these shops, can easily download, install, and run OpenBazaar just like anything else and uh, use Bitcoin. So how can you help? Join the discussion on our uh, subreddit if you use Reddit, OpenBazaar. Get coding, obviously, we'd love to have it. Uh, it's on GitHub um, on under OpenBazaar. We have an IRC, OpenBazaar on Freenode. Uh, test it out via GitHub. Uh, if you want to contact us, a few of us have Open Bazaar hoodies. There's our website, openbazaar.org. Project at openbazaar.org is our email. Please reach us out. And we'd love to take your questions now. Now, we're going to have a few uh, team members come up on stage from the Open Bazaar project. And um, they all work on different aspects here. And I'll put their names up on the slides as well. So thank you very much. We'd love to take your questions. OK. I see already one question. If you have a question, raise your hands and the mic will be passed to you. Hello, thank you. Um, will people use this to sell drugs and will you go to jail? So the question is if people will use it to sell drugs. Uh, um, yes, the answer is yes. 
Um, so this is a, a network that is uncensorable. W it is designed not to be censorable. Uh, we can't control it. I we're building a protocol, we're building a technology that can be used, similar to the way the internet works today. And it can be used for bad things, it can be used for good things. Uh, we expect to see some bad things. We, we expect it to, to change the way um, that e-commerce works. So we think the good users are gonna be uh, much broader than the bad users. But yeah, you're gonna have that. And um, we're working hard to build a, a web of trust that, um, that helps people um, when they first download the client and bootstrap it, it helps them see you know, legal things and legal goods, mostly you know, uh, things that are usually accepted, but if they really want to, to trade things that are illicit, they will be able to as well. So the question is if uh, we are uh, afraid as developers if we will be responsible for this. Uh, so um, not really because we are doing the, the science and technology part. We're not participating in any of the trade. We are not making money out of it. Uh, we're just building a protocol and then we're letting people download it and use it. We don't run any servers. We don't run any, trans we, don't we don't mediate any transactions. It all happens between the users. Uh, yeah, so I hope this answers the question. Thank you, next question. I think the I'm going to upstairs. What's first? As we know from uh, eBay and various other systems, systems that are based on fairly light parameters such as uh, web of trust and um, ratings and so forth are subject to fraud whereby basically somebody sets up a shop and runs it for about a year and then one weekend puts out a whole bunch of amazing offers and then runs off with the cash. And the basic flaw here is that a lot of the um, parameters and systems that people use for trust aren't good enough. Now, have you considered uh, looking at the systems built by CA Cert, which has managed to create what is basically a trusted layer that manages to achieve quite high and strong financial things? Uh, thanks, that's a great question. Uh, so we, we don't really like C CAs for our users because we want to maintain pseudonymity. And we don't want uh, the sellers or buyers to be associated with real identities or be uh, le uh, legally responsible in the traditional framework of governments. Um, because we want, to, uh, we want to have a network that is uncensorable by governments and can't be subpoenaed as well. Uh, to, to answer your question about what happens if a, a buyer, a, a seller, runs a shop for a while and then runs off, right? This is an important problem. And we have, we have some ideas for that, and one of them is called uh, Mutually Assured Destruction, and it extends these, uh, these ideas in a game theoretic way that, that ensures that the, the seller doesn't have any incentive to do that. Uh, the basic idea is that if they don't deliver, they lose some money, actually, instead of, of making money. And uh, if you want to talk about uh, the math behind that more, we, we, can, we can talk about it later, but uh, yeah, basically we, we have proofs that allow, allow us to build these systems. Any more questions? Oh, uh, pass it to the mic. Uh, why would we trust the notaries? Uh, how does that work? I don't understand. Wha uh, because it's an important part of the transaction. You said that both parties need to trust them. The notaries are uh, also peers on the network who also have reputation and would have a nickname associated with them. So uh, most likely their reputation would be based on uh, mediation activities. And as they mediate more and more uh, transactions, higher value transactions, they may even have a specialty type of transaction that they handle. Uh, they would become known for that and people would therefore trust them to mediate these processes. And um, so, you know, therefore the notary, how does it start? Okay, so, I mean, I cannot show you in the, a demo right now, but uh, basically within the client, you can specify your user type as So one way would be proof of burn. Uh, proof of burn is usually uh, used as a seed of trust. So when you show up onto the network, you're new, you have no reputation, no web of trust rating. Uh, what you can do is you can put up some kind of uh, bond essentially that goes away, you know, to the proof of burn, and it would show that you at least put up some stake in order to start your reputation. 
uh, that, that creates an incentive not to try a civil attack where you would generate a, a ton of stores to create a false reputation and uh, try to uh, you know, defraud somebody. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're out of time for questions. If you want to have, if you have more questions, please uh, meet people up front. Uh, thank you very much. Okay.